It's over to you. There you go. Flying Bastard, written by Tom C. Hunley, based on the novel by Clint Margrave. Uh, interior, exterior, Berlin, Saunders, Volkswagen, Golf, Day. Adjunct Community College English instructor, Berlin Saunders, 40, balding, beer bellied, but still handsome in his way, drives past a sign reading Long Beach Community College, home of the sharpshooters, circles a full parking lot and pulls into a spot labeled reserved for administrators. On his left arm, Berlin has a tattoo of an ignited wick coming out of the earth. Exterior, interior, college, college, food court, and quad, day. The food court consists of a handful of broken plastic tables and a cafeteria selling heat lamped breakfast burritos and coffee with no steam rising from it. Local vendors have set up stands to sell cheap jewelry and posters. The grass is littered with rabbits and their pellets. Sirens blare and firecrackers seem determined to sound like bullets. Firemen walk by. People run in all directions. Some scream. Others stand around and watch. Berlin joins the rubberneckers and addresses a couple of students who hold tennis rackets. His eye twitches. Do we seriously have an active shooter on the first day of spring semester? One student ignores Berlin, too fascinated by the action to break it with conversation. The other student shrugs. Maybe someone isn't happy with his grades from fall semester. The student who shrugged before shrugs again, raising her palms to further highlight her cluelessness. Super, practice test. English department chair, Harry Crawford, 50, speaks into a megaphone. Harry looks like a middle-aged man trying to look like an 80s teenager. He wears a silver brooch and prescription Ray-Bans. This is only a test, people, a simulation. Professor Kathy Stone, mid-30s, speaks into another megaphone. Think about what you would do in an actual emergency, though. Berlin cringes at the sight of Kathy and the sound of her amplified voice. EMTs carry giggling students and professors on stretchers. Berlin recognizes one, his fellow adjunct, Tom Corona, 40, baby-faced, with a sweaty bald head and a ratty book bag. He lies in the yoga position called Savasana in Sanskrit and corpse pose in English. Hey, Tom, Tom Corona, what the hell are you doing? The EMTs let Tom off his stretcher, then trot away. What am I doing? What are you doing? I'm showing to you some goddamn initiative. Damn it, Tom, stop volunteering. Part-timers don't get paid for service work, committee work, or whatever the hell you call this. Have some respect. Tom looks wounded and not just because he has been on a stretcher. I'm beefing up my curriculum vita. That's what I'm doing. The WAC coordinated job is opened up and I'm going for it. Full time status, here I come. What do you know about riding across the curriculum? Tom shrugs, palms up. I know it could be my ticket out of a junk tell teaching the shit classes during the shit time slots for shit pay while full-timers live like pharaohs in comparison. So you're sucking up. Typical Tom with your kiss assery. I hope it pays off for once, buddy. Berlin points at Tom's book bag. Tom gaze follows Berlin's finger. I know. Paintball is supposed to look like my book bag protected me from a gunshot. Berlin shakes his head. They're not going to compensate you for that either, you know. Tom shrugs and points at Berlin's leather book bag. I don't care about this bag. You know, I want yours or one like it with those cool buckles. I love that thing. Berlin gives his book bag a dumbfounded look, then turns that look on Tom. Love you, Tom, but now you're sucking up to me. Haven't changed much since grad school when you always try to be the teacher's pet. Grad school, we really thought we had the world by the nuts back then, am I right? Remember Professor Weber's workshop? Flashback, interior, college, classroom, night, super. California State University, Long Beach, 15 years earlier. 
A wide-eyed young Berlin sits around a seminar table with several classmates, including Phil, 30, wearing a t-shirt that reads, I wish you were a beer. Will, early 20s, in acoustic guitar in a gig bag leaning against the wall behind him, and Tom Corona. Presiding over the discussion is the man that Berlin and his classmates aspire to be, Professor Gerard Weber, 50s, goateed, wearing a micro suede blazer that covers his arms and his imposter syndrome. I like the scene where your protagonist brings home the stray cat and feeds her. That really humanizes him. I'd cut that. It's formulaic. Professor Weber looks down at Berlin's manuscript, then up at Berlin. So, Berlin, on the page five, your protagonist asserts that his father died in a car wreck while his mother was still pregnant with him. Then on page eight, he claims his dad died in Nam. Berlin nods his head and takes notes. Professor Weber turns to another dog-eared page in Berlin's manuscript. Still later, he's calling people that his father is living in a witness protection program. And finally, he confesses that he was the product of a one-night stand and never knew his dad. Professor Weber strokes his chin. Several of the students mirror this gesture. Berlin holds his breath. I dig it. It's fucked up. But in order to be punishable in this climate, it needs to be even more fucked up. That's straight up your own story. Dude, you gotta fictionalize that shit more. Tom, why don't you yank your nose out of Professor Webb's ass cheeks and have some opinions of your own? Professor Weber checks his watch. I would love to steer this discussion away from whose nose is between my ass cheeks and back towards this work in progress. But we are out of time. Berlin, this story shows great promise. Stick with it. Professor Weber returns Berlin's draft, a noted in purple ink. Everyone else returns their copies to Berlin. Thanks for the feedback, Professor. Thank you for your vulnerability. All of you, it's been a great semester. Keep writing. And maybe you get starred reviews in Kikas someday. Professor Weber holds up his latest book as if expecting applause, then hastens out the door. John, I was just kidding around. You know I love you. Envy you, man. Weber always flips all out over your writing. Berlin waves dismissively. Don't stick out drinking. Will stands and straps on his guitar gig bag. How about the bird dive, Phil? My band's playing there at 10. I'll put you on the list. <laughs> All you guys. Tom stands and straps his ratty backpack onto his back. Back. That sounds rad, Will. Berlin dumps everyone's notes on his story, except for Professor Weber's, into the trash can. He puts Professor Weber's notes in his backpack. Yeah, rad. We can all buy girls drinks and then watch the girls leave with you and your bandmates after your set. I'd better not. I teach in the morning. I need to prep. Come on, make us musicians and improvise. Man, one of my students lost both parents while still in high school. Another found his best friend's body after a suicide. And they're all writing poems about depression and angst. They deserve my best. Wow, teaching us such a noble profession. Thus, summer's off. End of flashback. Interior, community college conference room, day. Harry Crawford and Kathy Stone stand before a podium at the front of the room. Their faces and postures convey a mood of righteous anger under siege. Colleagues, you may or not, you may or not have heard the horrifying news that the news Breasts and Thighs franchise will be an official sponsor of this year's sporting events on campus. Harry pounds on the podium for emphasis. For those of you who don't know, breasts and thighs, and why would you? It's a sports bar that promotes the objectification of women by asking its waitresses to wear sca scantily clad midriff tank tops and shirt shirts. Kathy trembles as she speaks. What sort of message is this sending to our female students? or worse, to our male ones. Harry makes a fist and pumps it in the air. In the audience, Tom hangs his fist in the air. Berlin shakes his head at Tom. Humanities faculty are working on scheduling a rally. 
Kathy's fist joins Harry's in the air. Join us as we promote a fair and equal college culture. In the audience, Tom claps his hands over his head. Berlin rolls his eyes at Tom. Interior, exterior, Berlin's Volkswagen Golf day. Berlin arrives at the parking lot where he sees a ticket in his cracked windshield. He sighs. Another shitstorm of a semester incoming. Stupid active shooter drill. Damn waste of time, department meeting. And now this cute ticket. The driver of a Prius swerves and brakes to avoid hitting a rabbit. Flashback, interior, Berlin, Saunders house, living room, night. Berlin and Kathy, wearing sweatpants, pose on yoga mats while soft new age music plays. Berlin stretches, but it's nowhere near as flexible as Kathy is. For a 35 year old man, I have flexibility of a 57 year old woman. Maternal smile stretches across Kathy's face. You're doing fine, you'll get it. Berlin strikes another pose. What was Crawford talking about in the today's meeting? Graduate right and assessment requirement? And he actually wants us to call it GWA for short. Kathy, sorry, Kathy laughs. Gore? Like the metal band? Oh, Harry, so clueless. A beat. Kathy looks woozy and pale. Hey, you okay? Water? Berlin fetches a bottle of water for Kathy, who throws up. You're not, are you? Oh God, no, something I ate. I'm not saying, might be cool, I mean. I don't know. Flashback, interior of Berlin, Saunders house, living room, night. Berlin watches a football game on television. Kathy rolls her eyes. Why do you digest that toxic male garbage? Berlin keeps his eyes on the screen. Speaking of digesting, is there anything to eat? Oh, I should cook because I'm the woman. Kathy has her hands on her hips. Berlin doesn't, still doesn't look away from the screen. We could go out. Like you can afford to eat out. I'll make spaghetti. You fix the door hinge. She points the broken door hinge. Berlin sighs, grabs a screwdriver out of a drawer, and <laughs> tries to fix the door hinge. The beat. Kathy emerges with a plate of spaghetti. She crosses her arms. Good grief, Berlin. I eat your dinner. I'll take over here. Kathy fixes the door hinge. Berlin eyes twitch. Flashback interior, Berlin, Saunders house. Bedroom, night. Kathy catches Berlin calling a sex hotline, one holding, one hand holding the phone, the other hand under the cover. He blushes. She laughs. Shit. Kathy. Oh, don't stop. You've got to do something to develop calluses. Your hands are softer than mine. Flashback interior, Berlin Saunders house, living room, night. Berlin and Kathy sit on his couch, each nursing a glass of red wine. The empty bottle lies on the coffee table. I mean, fuck the yellow wallpaper. Charlotte Gilman Perkins is way overrated. And she might be the most hideous looking woman in American literature. Kathy splashes her glass of wine across Berlin's chest, staining his shirt. That's it. The last phallic shaped straw. You insufferable, misogynist. You used to be a feminist, but you've changed. Berlin's voice cracks. You're the one who changed ever since you got promoted to full time. Stop whining. It's so unattractive. It's unmanly. Kathy grabs a bottle of stain remover and sprays some on the wine splotch on Berlin's shirt. He snatches the bottle from her. Now who doesn't sound like a feminist? Hey guys, thank you for that. Uh, thoughts, let's go around. John. Uh, where to begin? <laughs> I enjoyed it. Bizarrely enough for me. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd be in interested to see where this goes. Just because I'm confused. Because I don't know what the plot is or anything. That's it. That's what I can say. Okay. Arno. What were your thoughts? I think 
Uh, I do agree that I don't really know where this is going um, because it starts somewhere and then it kind of the kind of proceeds to uh, multiple flashbacks and flashbacks within like I don't really understand what why the flashbacks are after a flashback because um, it just it it kind of feels like there's um, multiple films in this script. So like maybe one of like every scene could be the start of something or it could be part of one of a film. But I feel like right now they don't really feel like a coherent mm. film, maybe. I know what you mean. Yes, yes. Um, oh, you've all changed position. Um, Dorothea. Um, yeah, the same for me. I, I don't know who was having the flashback and then I don't know whose flashback it was and that's why I got lost, I think, in it. Um, also, really gross topic. I don't think you can get calluses from wanking too much. That's the kind of thing that you get in the gym, isn't it, here? From lifting, like, heavy metal. Yes. So I don't... I mean, I'm not a man, and I don't have a penis, so I don't really know, but I just don't imagine that that could happen. So for me, it was just a bit like, what? You might need some, some moisturiser, perhaps, or something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it was just really, like... It was I don't know. It just stuck in my head. Maybe it's a good a good thing to throw that in there, but I don't know. I just was like, what? <laughs> well, being a man and having a penis can they go hand in hand. <laughs> but, um, oh. <laughs> sorry about that. Alex. Alex. I thought it was, I think there's a, a, a funny underlying tone mm -hmm. that I can like see where the world like there's a, a mocking obviously it feels a little mockumentary alit aspect of it which I, I am getting and I like mm. um I'm really confused about the relationship between Kath is it Kathy and Berlin yeah like, I, really, I don't really understand if that's romantic or if it's friends or uh or what. um but I'm interested. I mean, I think that idea of like a community college um, teachers <laughs> association or whatever can it is like a funny. That is a funny thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool, Catherine. Hello. Um, well, straight away, the title may cause issues with certain production companies and being able. To, I mean, is bastard sort of swear word technically it could be an issue um but yeah uh the a couple of things that they were describing didn't seem necessary like the no steam on the coffee that was a bit like why is that in there it's uh it could become apparent later on but it seemed a bit unnecessary so maybe a bit of streamlining on the um uh, descriptions but the character descriptions were great they were handy um couple of typos in there so a proofread would be a good idea um some of the character dialogues seem a bit samey so some definition might be uh good but there were some nice comedy bits in there but um it was a little confusing yeah i agree with everybody else as to what kind of genre it was what theme they were going for um also when is it because the flashbacks uh are confusing but there was some language in there like rad so that denotes a certain decade. <laughs> and But then they said somebody like an 80s teenager. And then, so it would be nice to know when they start off and then you can figure out when the flashbacks are um, after you figure out who's having them. Um, it came across rather episodic rather than film to me because there was an awful lot happening in, in the first 10 pages. That, I mean, because it's set on a novel that I'm not familiar with, that might be how the novel's written. So I can't really, I would have said maybe pick a different opening because it didn't it didn't seem to follow through for the rest of it. I wasn't sure who it was about, what it was about, but there is some good good comedy in there and some good stuff. It was interesting, but a little confusing. So yeah. Cool, thanks. Lottie. I mean, I liked the characters. I thought they were engaging, but I did find the flashbacks confusing. And also, I feel like on the last page, some of the insults, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know if they feel fully natural in a way. Like, I feel like it's not what people would say. 
Mm. Okay, thank you. Who hasn't had a go? Uh, Rachel and Calvin. Rachel. Yeah, um, again, not 100% sure where it's going. I liked the action at the start, and I think that could grip somebody, but maybe just need a little bit more clarity in there, a bit more streamlining, like Catherine said. Um, I'm interested. I liked the professor. He was an interesting character. Something about him engaged me. Um, uh, <laughs> this is a personal comment. I really liked that you referred to metal bands because I'm a metal head and it's nice to hear that in mainstream <laughs> in, a, in something that might be, you know, a film or television program. And I hope it is. Um, only the, the whole breast thighs story feminist stuff is interesting and topical, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what I feel about the 57 year old woman comment of flexibility, but maybe that's what you want that character to be like. And I know near the end you talked about misogyny and feminist and whatever, so I can see that that might be coming together. But initially I was like, I don't know how I feel about that. But <laughs> like 100 year olds that are a lot more flexible than me, to be honest. So <laughs> yeah, um, really interesting script, keep at it. Cool, thank you. Kelvin? Um, well, I think um, I understand everyone else when they say like it was a bit confusing. Um, if you want to relate it to uh, some of the plots of a, a film, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to leave it in suspense. They're trying to make the viewers think of what's going on. Yes, they're trying to confuse the viewers at the beginning so that they should still ask questions like the way we're asking right now. To say what's happening, who is flashback, is it, what, what, what's going on, are they friends, are they dating? And then you know how they want to just unveil it somewhere. So yeah, I, I agree when somebody said it seems more um, episodic um, than film, because obviously we'll be expecting more uh, episodes to come to actually review what's going on, maybe to do some of the characters. But I think I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to create that questions from the people either reading or watching to say, to be looking forward, to know what's going on, to, to get what, what they were trying to do, what they're trying to tell them. Yeah, I think the writer thinks that that is the best approach to get the, the, what, the, the, the attention of the a viewer or audience. Um, he's gonna be lucky if he gets, um, an audience that is more patient um, um, because others just like it to go into pa pa pa. But as I said, I, I, give, I give the writer credit for how he's confusing people. I think, um, yeah, I could say that. <laughs> yes, well done, thank you. Um, um, my, so you have to remember, I think, that this is an adaptation from a novel and we don't know the novel, so um, we can't say how true to the novel it is. But the thing to remember is adaptations are actually really difficult to write. You think, oh, it's already there for you, so it's going to be easy. You just lift dialogue, you just lift, you know. And in actual fact, novels are a whole other thing <laughs> to a script. You've got time in a novel to explore things. And that was what made me wonder if some of these flashbacks were little bits of explorations in a novel about somebody's character or something that I don't know because I've never read the novel so I don't know um but it did just worry me that there were like four flashbacks one after the other with no indication about where in time were those flashbacks so maybe you could have done like two weeks earlier or six months earlier or I don't know it's a difficult one with those with flashbacks I agree they're creating a lot of suspense so that you are kind of going okay what's going on here um but that didn't come till the second half of our 10 minutes. So that's like in the second half in five minutes. But the first five minutes, I did think were a little bit on the slow side because we were kind of working our way into that point. Um, so I don't know. Um, there were um, just on the point of housekeeping, because I'm very big on format. Um, your characters, if you have like sirens blare, firecrackers, that's all great because you've got the sounds in, in caps, which is great. You need firemen in caps. You need people running in caps. You need others standing around in caps because they need to be identified as further characters that they will have to pick up from and, and then, you know, cast those. 
Um, and similarly on page one, one student ignores, again, needs to be in caps. Those are very basic things. They're very easy to, to, to correct, not a problem. Um, yeah, great, thank you. Any, any, anything else that comes to mind before we end that one? Well, I, I kind of got the gist that they were, Kathy and Berlin were friends or stroke flatmates because you know you wouldn't be for, you wouldn't be performing self gratification while your girlfriend stroke fiance stroke whatever she is is in the next room. Mm. You might. I, it depends on the on the well, maybe it's just place you, you go, to each it? of their own. You know. Maybe <laughs> it's just me then. But <laughs> some of the flashbacks I think were easy to date because. You get things like at the beginning, we're told Berlin is 40. And then when him and Kath are drinking wine, we're told Berlin's 35. So we know that was five years before. But like you say, I mean, the ones where they're saying they're younger. Yeah. Well, we, we still don't know when it's set. Or, I mean, even exactly. if they don't want to show it on the screen, they can do that with, with what the people are wearing and what everything yeah, looks like yeah. around them. But the people reading the script need to know what decade each oh, yeah, yeah. place is. I, I, so, I, I, I think the flashback, the original flashback, not the flashback in the flashback in the flashback, the original <laughs> flashback was the 80s, you know, because they were talking about, you know, kind of, when he mentions the heavy metal, it's not, like, if you were talking millennium, you'd be talking about thrash metal and things like that. But just to mention metal in the 80s was enough, because you were, move, you know, we were moving kind of away from grunge, which is sad, but... But not everybody's going to know that. It needs to be because it's you well, know everybody the, the should know that the instruction manual side of a script needs everybody to let the people know. Everybody should know that. <laughs> but it has got legs though. It's it's, uh, yeah. it's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I did enjoy it without a shadow of a doubt. And I okay, want to know what's going to happen. Thank you. I'm going to just stop the recording now because we have.